Just so you know, one of the uh, raffle prizes is going to be a. Uh, uh, it's going to be a uh, twenty-minute workout video. It's called the uh, Back to Back Two. <laughs> Coming up, we have Bruno Haas from Oric X. His uh, prep boy Bogdan setting up for me here. And uh, Bruno is going to be talking to us about <clears throat> interaction recordings for CSPs, call centers, and the enterprise. Have you used one of these? <laughs> well, the network is quite unstable. The network. Okay. Otherwise, I sent you a PDF version also oh, really? on your email. Oh yeah. So while well, we have a couple of minutes, uh, have uh, your uh, brains been working on some questions? I mean, I know we've only seen a couple of uh, speakers at this point, but anybody have any ideas on like what they've seen on the schedule and aren't necessarily satisfied about? You might want some more information about something new. Really? None of you? Full screen, maybe? Is it full screen? It's uh, not. Um, uh, yeah, just, uh, what's, uh, maybe F11? Just a quick one presentation. Mm. What was present? Yeah, 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 here. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Yep. Yeah. Works. Uh, you'll see it only the, oh, sorry, you'll see it only on the projector. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Use that's good. I just use the, the, the arrows, I guess. Yeah, yeah. okay. Or, or tab. Yeah. To go. Yep. Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Without any further ado, Bruno Haas from OrcaX. Can uh, everyone hear me? I guess my, uh, no, no. my, my. There's a little switch okay. right on top. Okay. Which one? Yep. Hello? Oh, yeah. Uh, Hello. Um, so I'm Bruno Haas. Um, I'm uh, the, the, the co-founder and the CTO of uh, Orx, Orx X. We, uh, we do um, call recording, screen recording, and quality monitoring. Um, originally only for call centers, but uh, you know, in the last, uh, let's say, almost 10 years by now, uh, we, we, uh, we do a lot of uh, CSP level or ITSP uh, level <coughs> recording. I um, I'm a French national and I live and work in Canada and the company is uh, actually uh, a headquartered in Chicago. So, so it all started back in uh, 2005. Um, I had been exposed uh, uh, and with my colleagues with a lot of um, you know proprietary uh, recording systems. Um, some of you may know nice, the, the nice and the various of the world and. Um, we, we were very dissatisfied with, um, with what we were seeing, you know, very monolithic, very, uh, very proprietary, very locked down. And so, so the idea was, you know, back then, you know, 2005, asterisk was all the rage. Um, so the idea was to, uh, to uh, create uh, an open source project, um, initially to, do, to, to, to be able to record voice over IP um, based on passive recording. So what passive recording means is that you essentially leverage the fork mirroring capabilities uh, of your Ethernet infrastructure. So you use what's being called in, in the Cisco world, for example, SPAN, our SPAN, our SPAN, for, the, for those of you who know that. Uh, initially it was supporting only SIP and Cisco Skinny on the signaling side, and of course RTP, to, uh, to grab the, uh, the audio data. Um, the, 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 the main idea was to have something really open, <coughs> um, use, use standards where possible, um, do, do a system where you are in control of your own data, um, including the database, uh, and also try to not dictate to people what they should use as an operating system. Uh, not dictate people what they should use as a, as a database, uh, and so on. And over the years, this, this, this side of, uh, of, of our business, the passive recording, has evolved, and we can now support many, many different uh, proprietary technologies. Um, 
And uh, you know, we have introduced uh, passive load balancing. We have introduced uh, many different things. Now, the problem is, um, back around 2009, 10, uh, we were starting to, to, uh, to be uh, in touch with, uh, with um, CSPs, ITSPs, who wanted to do recording and sell it, uh, sell it as an add-on uh, to, their, to, their, to their services. Uh, so the big problem uh, for them was passive uh, recording didn't really uh, work that well for them. And the main reason was that uh, most of them, you know, would have, let's say, a, a call center as a customer. And uh, the call center would say, I absolutely need recording now. And, and so, but they would start small. So you would have like a handful of people needing the recording. For example, you, you know, you have, you know, a, a small call centers of 15 seats once recording, and so basically you want to record 15 seats. And at the same time, you have hundreds of subscribers, or thousands of subscribers, or even 10,000 of, of subscribers. And so it's really the needle in the haystack. Um, uh, do you really want to provision, you know, servers that can actually ingest traffic for thousands of users? Or do you want to, uh, to, uh, to engineer for only starting small for a few users and then um, uh, scale from there? So the proprietary, um, uh, the proprietary PBX uh, vendors had already solved that problem. Uh, and that's basically what's being called the active recording, where the, the recorder, you know, instead of being an external observer, has nothing to do with the, the, the platform, becomes a, an integral part of uh, the telephony infrastructure. And so they had developed, like Avaya developed the MCC, Cisco developed BIB, uh, Mitel they developed SRC. So, so they, had, they had solved that problem whereby you could, you could say, I, I only want to record this range of users. And, and so that those only traffic for these would be sent the recorder. So, in the uh, in the in the uh, in the CSP world, that's that's that that was a problem that needed to be solved. And so, back then, we were talking to, to large providers uh, running broad soft infrastructure, and we were talking to to, uh, to to their engineers. And so, we initially we started using the Lawful Intercept interface uh, of uh, the, the Broadworks uh, product, and. Uh, it was, you know, it worked because basically, off of Intercept, you can, you know, take any call uh, that's going on on the platform and route it to a law enforcement agent. And so, why not use that to record? I mean, it made sense. It made sense. The, the, the problem is, it was it hasn't been engineered to do mass recording. Um, so very quickly, uh, the broad soft uh, engineers told us not to do this anymore, and they strongly discouraged their. The customers to, uh, from using it. So, but still, so what do we do? Uh, so essentially, we were talking with broad, broad soft engineers and 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 and, and s s creating a, a recording interface based on SIPREC made a lot of sense. So we were having those discussions with them, and then sure enough, they uh, you know they, they teamed up with uh, uh, with uh, other people in the industry from Nokia, from you know the big names, um, went through the IETF. And created something that is called CIPREC. <clears throat> so CIPREC is the standard way of doing active recording. Um, so it opens new possibilities. So you can, you know, easily send CIPREC traffic offsite. You could have, you know, a server provider uh, who wants to switch on recording doesn't want to manage it. He can simply uh, switch off CIPREC, switch on CIPREC. Send it to you know over the internet um, uh, to uh, to to a hosted recording provider, for example. And um, so we basically have a, a solution that we sell. We enable people to run clouds that do that, the hosted recording. And we also we also actually host recording ourselves. Uh, but mostly we are enabler enablers of uh, for people to do that. Um, also, with the advent of CPREC now, you you can you know record cellular traffic, uh, as you know the whole uh, cellular uh, cellular networks have moved to IMS core, and the, the the infrastructure 
of ILS core is based on FVCs that can themselves do CIPREC. And so we, we recently have done uh, a trial with a big French utility uh, with uh, infrastructure based on Metaswitch. And so we, we successfully demonstrated uh, recording cellular traffic that way. Uh, so a little bit about the CIPREC protocol. Um, so essentially, it looks very much like a regular SIP. The difference is instead of having, um, so the body, the content type, instead of being simply SDP, you actually have a multi-part uh, content type and with a boundary, meaning that you will, so, so a SIP invite in the SIP prep protocol will have both an SDP part in the body and also have a piece of XML. And that piece of XML will actually carry all of the met metadata pertaining <coughs> to the main communication session that is being recorded. So because it's XML and XML is pretty verbose, it basically means that uh, those, those SIP invites get really large, like you know, in the area of three kilobytes. And so you uh, you're easily um, exceed the, the, your typical NPU of 1500 by bytes. So you actually need to be a little bit careful there. You know, sometimes uh, some routers have difficulty uh, routing um, uh, fragmented UDP traffic. So TCP might be, uh, might be uh, an option there. So, so that's the way uh, the, the components are, uh, um, are, have been uh, basically um, architected by the uh, IETF. So here you have um, two user agents, A and B. They are having a communication session between each other and then the telephony platform basically forks that communication session as a recording session. And it implements, so the telephony platform implements something called a session recording client. And also called the SRC. So that's the responsibility of the telephony platform. And it initiated a recording session to the session recording server, which is the SRS. And that's, that's basically our part, that's the recorder. So I just pasted a little bit of, uh, probably you can't see much, but you know, it's just an example uh, of XML that you would have in the body of your invite next to the SDP. Uh, it is architected uh, around um, a, a few uh, object types. You have sessions, so basically a recording session. You have participants, so here you have two participants in the, in, the, in the session, and you have streams. And here you can see you have two streams. Uh, you can see labels also, so the streams in the XML map to the streams in the, in the NDP. Um, and you can see here they are separate, meaning that you have one stream per talker. Uh, which you know could also be you know some solution like Broadworks are, are capable of mixing it down to uh, one single audio stream uh, for both sides. So the um, CIPREC has been very successful. Um, essentially, right now most larger CSPs uh, provide a recording uh, via CIPREC. Um, some some service providers uh, don't, some, some still stick to port mirroring, uh, mainly for cost reasons. Uh, because, you know, CIPREC, like if you go to talk to Broadworks and Metaswitch, you have to, you have to pay licenses for CIPREC. So, so sometimes uh, due to that, so some, some, but it's mostly 90% of the CSPs now uh, are using CIPREC. It's a, it's a very uh, effective uh, method. And then in the enterprise world, um, Basically, all you know, all well-known SVC vendors have implemented some form of CIPREC, even the smaller ones. Uh, so you, you you name them the the Sonus, the uh, Sonus, which is now Ribbon, uh, Avaya, um, uh, Audio Codes, and so on. All of the uh, the, the SVCs uh, now have uh, CIPREC support, and they support it to very very varying degrees. Uh, some some have uh, much better support than others. For example, the, the so the original one was the uh, the Oracle SVC, which was called Acme Packet back then, 
And uh, so they have a fairly mature system with uh, very, very strong HA capabilities. Um, so in terms of the, 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 the call center and the enterprise, the adoption of, of CIPREC on the ground has been a little bit slower because you have a lot of them who still don't have APCs. A lot of them still use ISDN for their trunking. Uh, so uh, so it is, uh, it is uh, an ongoing thing. Now, CIPREC also has a few challenges. I would say for uh, people running, um, you know, running infrastructure such as Broadworks MetaSwitch, it's, it's uh, pretty close to, uh, to, uh, to an ideal scenario. Uh, now for uh, the call centers and the enterprise, it's not as simple as that. Because when you do CIPREC, essentially you're talking to the SBC and the SBC, <coughs> is the interface between the external world and the internal world. So you essentially have a very, the, the, the view, you have a, a, a trunk view of the world, which means that uh, the SBC often is unaware of routing decisions that have been made, been made downstream. So the, 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 the SBC doesn't know if your call is going to an IDR, if it's going to agent number one, transfer to agent number two. So all of this can be problematic and so usually uh, when you implement it in a call center, you also have to integrate with uh, the, the telephone switch, uh, usually via CTI. Uh, so for example, TAPI or TNT TAPI. And so this makes this solution somewhat more complex now. Because uh, you, you have to have two data feeds, you have to merge them, uh, you have to find unique keys when you, when you can, or just you know try to match. Um, so compared to port mirroring, where if you port mirror on the extension side, there's a lot of stuff that you already have. <coughs> and that's so, so very often you, you didn't necessarily need to have CTI integration when working with the extension side. So at some point, uh, seeing the, the success of, uh, of CIPREC in the industry, we basically decided to sponsor uh, the first open source implementation of an SRC, so the, 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 the client side, which is the side that belongs to the telephony platform. And um, you know, having a, a good relationship with uh, Bogdan and friends, we decided to sponsor OpenSIPS to, uh, to write such an implementation. So it was developed a couple of years ago by, uh, mostly by Razan, I think, and there's been uh, some some, some uh, other contributions uh, since. Uh, so uh, OpenSIPS only deals with uh, signaling, of course. So it has to, uh, it's, it's, it's based on the RTP proxy to do, uh, to do the media forking uh, so that it is being sent to us for, uh, for recording. So it is available on the, uh, on the, uh, the OpenSIPS uh, uh, Git repo uh, you know, as a module. So just quickly, a, a little, you know, a quick overview of uh, the, the features that we, we offer. We have multi-tenancy, very important for CSPs. Uh, Auto-provisioning also, you don't want to spend your time mating two different databases. Uh, uh, Privileged system, we, we, um, we, we give a uh, service provider the ability to create their own user interface. So we have a REST API for that, and we also have a WebSocket-based event um, uh, event streaming, so you have all of the tools uh, to uh, to build a user interface if uh, uh, if uh, you don't want uh, to be uh, to be using ours. Um, we have a media manager, which is really uh, extremely important, also for CSP. So you can move files, co copy files, do retention. Um, you uh, so we recently added uh, uh, Amazon S3 support for storing files uh, in the cloud. You know, um, S3 is, is you know, one of the cheapest in the industry as far as, uh, as, as storing, uh, storing files. Uh, so this, this one bothers me a little bit because, you know, we are very, uh, we, we are really all about open standards. And S3, you have to use Amazon's proprietary interface to upload file, which, which I don't really like, to be honest with you guys. Uh, what was funny is when we were investigating that, uh, we really, at some point we realized, oh, uh, S3 has 
an SFTP interface. You're like, oh, for, for 10 minutes, we're like, oh, it's excited, nice, nice, it's standard. And then after 10 minutes, we realize, oh, they charge extra. <laughs> so, I mean, so they basically charge extra for the, uh, for the, uh, the open part, it's crazy. But so, so due to popular demand, that's, that was asked by a, a number of service providers. We uh, we just you know we just developed uh, with whatever proprietary interface. Hopefully we can remove that at some point with something that's more standard because it's a little bit of a slippery slope there. Um, we also do screen recording. Uh, that's mostly uh, useful for call centers uh, where you want to know how your agents are actually uh, using their CRM application. Are they you know what are they doing? Are they using it well and so on? And so we do screen recording, and our solution is based on the RFD protocol, which is what underpins uh, VNC, you know, the flavors, ultra VNC, real VNC, and so on. Uh, we, we find it's, it's, it's working uh, very well for our, our kind of workloads of, you know, computer screens. Um, now, we also recognize that um, uh, with the advent of WebRTC, uh, screen sharing in WebRTC is done using VP8 and more recently maybe VP9, uh, which is an interesting choice. Um, you know, it's, it's more of a lossy protocol. I mean, you, you, of course you can tune the quality, but we find that on our kinds of, of workloads, uh, RFD works best. But um, still, we're you know, working on adding support for VP8. Um, a little bit of a word on voice analytics. So this is very, a very, very hot topic in our, in our industry right now. Um, voice analytics, uh, which, you know, what is voice analytics? It's basically trans, trans, transcribing your calls to, to, uh, to text and then be able to do all sorts of analytics, be able to, to find calls that have certain attributes, calls where there is emotions, negative calls and so on. Um, so this has really reached a tipping point uh, and mostly due to, uh, to the advances in, uh, in, um, in deep learning. So it has come to a point where it's actually having a business value. I, I was, basically I was working on uh, voice analytics uh, 15 years ago in the UK and um, it was very promising, but we could not deliver, uh, the, 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 the quality of the transcription was not good enough back then. You would, you would have like a 70% accuracy rate, and so, so you would read the transcription and you would, you know, like, there would be a lot of nonsense in there. Uh, so it, but that's really, really improved. And so there is like, right now, so many new startups that are being created around voice analytics in general. And where we fit in is basically um, those guys, they need to get to the audio, they need to get the recording. And so, so they are talking to many different customers. They are, uh, here is CIPREC, here is active, here is passive, and it's, you know, it's, it's like a huge mess of telecom stuff. And so we are like the, the glue between the telephony and, uh, and the voice analytics. Sometimes, sometimes they use our software only for that. And sometimes they, um, they sometimes customers also want a full-fledged uh, recorder with uh, with all of the of the bells and whistles. So for these guys, the requirements are stereo audio. So that's a bit of a stretch. It's actually dual. So you want to have uh, the remote talker and the local talker in separate channels. Uh, that 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 basically uh, makes the the voice analytics work work much better because they can delineate sentences very easily. Um, you need G711. I mean, G711 is 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 basically they want the best possible quality, and usually that is G711. Uh, and also deterministic audio channel distribution. So you need to be able to guarantee that, uh, let's say, your call center agent is always on the right channel. And the remote is always on the on the left channel, and so we can do that for them. So, just quick word uh, on legal aspects. So, essentially, um, of course, it's illegal to record uh, a, a communication if uh, you don't have at least one person that's aware of it, unless it's unless a, ju a judge orders it, or 
Maybe you can uh, ask uh, Edward Snowden. Uh, he would tell you about uh, some people doing it anyway. Um, but, but broadly speaking, you, uh, the world is divided into, uh, into countries that, that, that need, require one party to be aware and countries where uh, you need both parties to be aware. Um, and in the US, it's actually mixed. Some states are you know, one party and some states have two parties. Uh, so, you know, which is usually why you also uh, hear the, the, this, this, this voice telling you when you call your insurance, you know, this call may be monitored. So they basically tell their, their agents and they also tell, tell the customer we are going to record this call. Um, then, uh, so you are, in certain industries, you have compliance recording and you have to record. Uh, so in the financial industry, so that's the European <coughs> regulation and uh, MIFID and the Dodge Frank is a Wall Street reform. So if, if a call is going to uh, result in a transaction, you have to record it and you have to keep it for five years. So we, we, we provide all those tools. Uh, PCI DSS, that's the, 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 the credit card industry. So basically Visa MasterCard get, came together and uh, they said, okay, uh, security reasons, you can't store any credit card details. Um, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary to, to conduct a business. So in, pra in practical terms, what this means is that you, uh, for, for voice recordings, you're blanking out uh, the parts where there's a credit card that's being transmitted. So we have an API to do proper <coughs> zoom for that. And you can also use uh, speech analytics to, to do uh, redaction. It really works pretty well. Um, yeah. So last slide about GDPR. Um, maybe I won't uh, spend uh, too much time on it because I'm running out. But uh, so GDPR in Europe, uh, it's become, um, you know, and, and that's a general trend. You have now with all those regulations, you have to be able to, um, you have to be able to justify why you're recording. You have to be able to minimize the number of people who can access the recording. So you have a very strong privilege system. You need to be able to, um, to, to, so to, you need to document everything you do. So if you will ever get in trouble, you need to be able to show that you took the, you, you took all the steps, uh, to all of the reasonable steps to, to actually protect the, the data. Um, also there is a right to be uh, forgotten, uh, in the GDPR, which means you know, anybody from the general public, you know, uh, contacts you and say, I want my calls deleted. And so you have to comply. And so here too, you, and so it's all well to do recording, but you have to have those tools to be able to remove somebody's calls instantly, very easily, you know, you don't want to be an admin nightmare. So that's about it from me uh, this morning. So any questions? Anybody have any questions for Bruno? We've got a hand. Wave at that. Two. Three. Flavio, you work here. Who was it over here? So with OpenSIPs proxying the SIP through, um, do you have like a user agent behind OpenSIPs to ask? Um, yeah. So yeah, exactly. So uh, so our basically. The uh, the CIPREC uh, SRS that we uh, um, implement is a is a user agent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, switch, uh, RTP engine, RTP proxy, all of them support uh, inbuilt recording. So why should we use CIPREC? Is, is there a specific use case for that? So uh, for you know open source technologies, yeah, most of them do have uh, inbuilt recordings, and, and a lot of people just uh, use them. Um, so it is true that we don't have uh, that many people who use uh, uh, our solution for doing recording. Although, um, you know, there are there are people who um, who want to essentially concentrate their asterisks and their free switches to do core switching because recording, uh, you know, adds more moving parts. Uh, you know, you can run on the disk space. You can. You know, you basically there's more processing that's being done, and so so uh, there is something to be said about separating uh, your recording from your core switching, so that no matter what happens to the recording, nothing is going to happen to what is most important to you, which is the core switching. 
Thank you. And Bruno, sorry, if I may, uh, with the CITREX, you can uh, actually do more than, uh, okay, let me take the other way. With the active proxy, you can do a very raw recording of the audio file, while CITREX, it's more, let's say, intelligent. You have a lot of metadata, so you pass a lot of logic in terms of if should be recording, doing parts or uh, review room and so on, into the CITREX area. So, for example, with, again, with a, uh, something similar to active proxy, it's more like a Row brutal ap uh, approach in recording everything. But uh, with the CIDREX, because thanks to the metadata, you can do a lot of things. You have a lot of information attached to the actual recording that you pass to the recording server, and then can, uh, that can implement more uh, features. In terms Post processing. Of we can do the policies, uh, the management, uh, whatever. Or you write it again. You do realize you just took away the opportunity for Flavio to ask a question. Right? <laughs> Just stole it. Oh, this is it? Grab the microphone. Flavio, we have coffee together. <laughs> no, wait, look, maybe it's an important question. No. <laughs> <laughs> what are the most prominent companies that you've seen on voice On, on voice? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, um, so I would say, so you have... Google. What I, <laughs> no, IBM. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but in the call center, it's uh, you, they don't typically use Google. They all use companies that specialize, um, and uh, so you have you have the what I call the independent ones, and you have so you have uh, analytics that are attacked onto the nice and the berries, but then the independent ones, the market leader is coal miner, uh, and then you have a few of, a few other people such as Voice Space. Um, so you 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 yeah. Basically, uh, you have coal miner is uh, is really the market leader there. It's, it's, yeah, 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 it is an extension. So, yeah, in so the sense. Does it go? It has additional components. Does it like part of it? How does it? Work? When you start a call, how do you tell that this has to be recorded? And then has to go along with the SIP message of so CIPREC itself doesn't have the intelligence of saying, okay, uh, wh when should I create a CIPREC, uh, CIPREC uh, um, a recording session? Mm -hmm. But so so that's uh, so there's two there's there's two mindsets. Yeah. Sometimes this logic is implemented in the in the telephone platform. For example, in Broadworks, you can provision users and you can say, I want this user recording. And so this is all managed in the in the telephone platform. And and, uh, and 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 same for uh, for OpenSeq. Also, you can you can write a script that only forwards whatever you want. Uh, but also, there's platforms like for SBCs. Usually, they will so the SBC will invite the recorder for everything, and then uh, the, the 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 SR the, the SRS, which we implement, will actually say no, I don't want this invite, and you reject. Or you say, okay, give me, you know, let's let's go ahead, give me the RTP, the RTP and record. I got the question. So uh, let me understand the two pieces. You have to anchor media as open SIP, and uh, CIPREC is also part of the signaling part, mm -hmm. is it kind of a proxy, or it's invited leg and it's separate? It's separate. It's separate. It's completely so, separate. So there's a there's a communication session that's going on, and then there's a recording session, which is completely separate. It's a it's like forked on the on the media side. It's forked, and then it's it's basically a, a different session, different call ID, and so on. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, let's get one more round of applause for Bruno.